why is this really significant in your opinion for Africa to be specific? Uh, Eugene, it's extremely significant. Thanks for having me, by the way. Mm -hmm. We made history today. For the first time in Africa, on the African soil, we launched a program, a master's program in machine intelligence, which has never existed. No university has ever provided that training. Mm -hmm. It's uh, extremely important for three reasons. Number one, uh, uh, artificial intelligence is going to revolutionize and impact every single aspect of our lives. Mm -hmm. We have no choice. It, the wave is coming, and the wave is big. It's huge. Number two, Africa is the youngest continent, and Africa has the talent to lead the uh, machine intelligence revolution, mm -hmm. that technological revolution. Number three, uh, businesses, industry in Africa, academia, education, health, agriculture, every single area, business area, industry area will be impacted by artificial intelligence. Yes. That is the reason why Africa haven't missed the analog revolution, the digital revolution. We cannot afford to miss uh, this technological uh, breakthrough. Right. And as we all get affected by this, I'm sure you're talking positively affected. Uh, there are those who have fears within themselves that actually now this thing is actually not going to be that good as much as it has been touted. Some of those are those in jobs, in the job market, feeling a bit scared that actually the machines are going to take away their jobs coming from you. What would you tell these people? I, I want to reassure these people. When you look at the history of industrial, all the industrial revolutions we've been through, uh, I don't fear the fact that uh, machine intelligence is going to take away jobs. It's going to do the contrary. Uh, you will see many young entrepreneurs in Africa. Mm. Let me give you a simple example. Data, massive data that we have been amassing for decades. Mm. Young people can turn those data into in artificial intelligence mm. services in health, in agriculture. You can use AI technology to offer better diagnosis in health. And take this example, uh, more than two billion people have no access to surgery. Mm -hmm. How many surgeons are you going to, to teach for them to perform the surgery directly? Mm -hmm. AI technology, mm -hmm. AI services mm -hmm. are going to help uh, operate intervention, surgical intervention by distance. Mm -hmm. So uh, machine intelligence is going to generate, trigger, uh, unleash, mm -hmm powerful dynamic, a wave of uh, startups, mm. a wave of industries, a wave of businesses that have never existed before. Yeah. Remember the statistic when a professional says, expert says, that out of 10 so, uh, young kids who started school today, eight to seven to eight will work in businesses that have never existed. Mm. Where are they coming from? Right. Most of them are coming from AI and machine intelligence. Right, and, and if they come from there now, the key question now is, how do we make sure that there is inclusion, that no one is actually left behind? Absolutely. That's, the, that's one of the two major uh, 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 challenges that machine intelligence will have to tackle. Mm -hmm. Number one, the biases. Number two, uh, the perception of equity. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is the reason why it's important for Africa to get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, you, when you land, you land in an airport in, the, in Europe, in the USA, you have machine machine there yeah. screening people. Mm -hmm. The machine, the system, those are machine intelligent machine. The system, what is in the system, has been built by people mm -hmm. who have no uh, background for African for black faces or whatever. Yeah. So you can get discriminate. You can get the, the machine can go biased about you uh, when you go through when they screen. Not because they have something specific about you, but the people who work on the AI, artificial intelligence have technology, in mind. exactly, have their selves in mind. Mm. In the health sector, mm. same thing. Most of the drug tested using machine intelligence in the West do not include uh, black people, African, uh, you know, from sub-Saharan Africa. Mm. This is exactly the reason why we say we are saying at AIMS that Africans' perspectives and cultural perspectives must be integrated in the whole artificial intelligence technology. Right. And of course, when we look at this, we understand that the first cohort is actually made of 31 students and 41% of them are women. Are women. I, I, I know you'll tell me that 41% is a good number, but still, this is not the number we need when we talk about inclusiveness as far as women or gender is concerned in this. Uh, you're correct, the 40%, we would have loved to have 50-50, mm -hmm. 
but you see we're, we're bringing Africa to the cutting edge of science. Mm -hmm. You know, this is cutting edge uh, technology. Yeah. And uh, finding the people to go into this cohort was extremely challenging. There are many talents in Africa. Mm -hmm. They went through very rigorous selection. Mm -hmm. And uh, I say kudos to those uh, young women yeah. who qualify for that. Some of them have extraordinary, robust academic and scientific background. Mm -hmm. So you have 31 students from 11 countries in Africa, 40% of them uh, are women, and they're very excited yeah. and preparing to get started. Right. Of course, as we look at that as well, we understand that you're actually doing this uh, in, in partnership or in support equally by Facebook and Google. Uh, how then do we ensure that, uh, you know, students who are actually taking this particular uh, program are not actually outshadowed or overshadowed by these two tech giants, Facebook and Google? You know, first of all, it's, um, uh, we're grateful to ha have uh, engaged uh, Google and uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. these two tech giants, uh, and backed them up on this. They were, they were in, at Kigali Convention Center this morning. It was an exciting moment. Yeah. And we want to continue to work with uh, those tech giants uh, over the next decades to come. Mm -hmm. Now to your question. Uh, how do we ensure that this, uh, I'm, I'm asked that whether uh, we are creating a talent pool, mm -hmm. uh, pool of talent for the tech uh, mm -hmm. giants. Mm -hmm. And I say, and why shouldn't there be? So the, my message here is not to the tech giants. Yeah. My message here is to African institutions, mm -hmm. it's to our government, mm -hmm. it's to our university. They must position themselves, they must compete yeah. to earn, uh, the, uh, to win over uh, those talents in a very cutting edge and uh, field of technology. Right. So we cannot uh, sit back and continue to say, oh, they might take over, there will, they will be brain drain, we are going to, um, to, to field, yeah. transfer them. Yeah. I, I, I guess the young people, young technologists, scientists I've seen, I've met, they have a commitment to give back to Africa. Right. So some of them, uh, we hope the majority will be staying here. They will be having jobs in Africa, mm -hmm. trying to be agents of transformation of Africa's economic and uh, technological uh, transformation. But at the same time, some of them may go there and acquire more expertise and come back. Mm -hmm. But it's extremely important that we create in Africa, across the continent, framework conducive environment for those tech specialists to stay here and work here. Right. That goes beyond the capacity of AIMS. It speaks directly to each African government and the African Union and the regional bodies across the continent. Right. When you sit back as the president of this very important institution or uh, center of excellence, when you look ahead, let's say two, three years to come, because this course is about one year, 10 months or about one year, where do you see the continent going after they go through this particular rigorous exercise? I see bright prospect for the continent. Mm -hmm. Uh, Eugene, uh, I have to say this. We've graduated over the past 15 years, mm -hmm. 2,000 mathematical scientists. 80% mm -hmm. of them are still living in Africa. Yeah. So we will be graduating over the next three years about 100 um, tech savvy uh, in a, a machine intelligence. Mm -hmm. It's not nothing. Right. As we speak, we, we almost have none. So I'm seeing all these young tech uh, specialists, experts, being involved in agriculture, improving transportation, improving um, um, food security and uh, climate science. Uh, I'm seeing them bringing their problem solving skills to make industry work better, mm -hmm. to improve uh, business processes, uh, product development. Yeah. And when it comes to government, developing tools to hold governments accountable. Right. Thank you so much, Thierry, for making time to speak to us on CNBC Africa.